Welcome to our third lesson, Preserving Sides and Lengths of Module 1, Rigid Transformations. A great quote by George Bernard Shaw, success does not consist in never making mistakes, but in never making the same one a second time. An interesting event around this time, but back in 1938, was the Hindenburg disaster, which ended the age of the Zeppelins. Feel free to click on this picture for a link to the article. All right, in the first quadrant of your math journal, write down your daily learning targets. 1.5 is if I have a pair of vertical angles and know the angle measure of one of them, I can find the angle measure of the other. And then 1.6, I can find missing side lengths or angle measures using properties of rigid transformations. And while I may not explicitly teach the vertical angles today, I will be uh, previewing that with you, uh, which will lead into our next lesson. So in quadrant two of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. Part A we're going to do together now. Uh, and when we discussed this, we discovered that this uh, A prime, B prime, C prime green triangle is not the image of the pre-image ABC triangle, which is in blue. The reason for that is because it does not uh, preserve the same side lengths and angle measures. Uh, a is angle A is acute, A prime is obtuse, and the height of each of these are different. We did notice that the base BC has the same length as B prime C prime. However, uh, all three sides and angles must stay congruent in order for it to be a rigid transformation uh, from the pre-image to the image. Part B: A square is made up of an L-shaped region and three transformations of that region. We discovered that that transformation uh, is a rotation each time. Uh, if we're looking at the red one and going to the yellow and then the blue and the green, that would be a clockwise rotation about the center point here where the red dot is. Uh, and then we discovered that if the perimeter of the square is 40 units, we were all able to break these up into smaller squares and notice that because one side is 10, each of the little squares that make up one side is worth 2.5 units. And so then we were able to add up the perimeter of each of the line segments that made up the smaller squares of each of these L-shaped regions. And 2.5 times 10 of those gave us a perimeter of 25 units. Here's an isosceles right triangle. We were asked to rotate this triangle 90, 180, 270, to find out what it would look like. We did this together using patty paper, uh, and we rotated this each 90, time, uh, 90 degrees each time. We noticed that uh, we're making the assumption here that this is the right angle, which it is, and that these two uh, line segments, CB and AB, are the sides that are equal. In fact, when you get to geometry in high school, you'll learn that this is a special right triangle used extensively in trigonometry and uh, calculus, called a 45-45-90. So what will it look like once I've rotated this uh, 90, 180, and then 270 degrees clockwise? And we came up with that image. We discovered that this is a rhombus, a square, a kite. Um, all the center angles are 90 degrees. We discovered that each of these smaller angles of each triangle are 45 degrees, and that each of the side lengths are equal under the rigid transformation of rotation. A great math article to read is uh, Music in Motion, about how plotting our routines on an iPad helps make this marching band show spectacular. It was pretty cool. On your own time, you can engage in the videos and other resources on the page to enrich this learning experience. We then experimented with GeoGebra's applet in creating line segments and rotating them to see what would happen. I'm going to go ahead and do this with you as this leads into our notes for uh, the formal notes for today. So when we rotate a line segment, we can create that segment selecting two points. And we can choose a third point not on that line segment. 
And this command here is the midpoint. So it's asking us to select two points, a segment, circle, or conic. So we can select these two points and it will give us the midpoint. So what happens if I rotate this line segment about C? Uh, and first, I want to show you 90 degrees counterclockwise. And see how it's perpendicular to that line? And then what happens if I rotate it 180 degrees around C? It's parallel to the pre-image line segment. And notice also that when we rotate, the vertices are in the opposite side, or on the opposite side of the line segment. So A is now down here, A prime. B is now B prime. So what happens if I go ahead and rotate it about that midpoint? So I'm going to take the line segment, rotate it about D, and let's just rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, look at that. It still touches that original line segment, but intersects it at a 90 degree angle. So you can imagine that if we rotate it again another 90 degrees, it will land on itself. Keep that in mind for future activities that we do. I highlighted the midpoint uh, command for you as well. All right, so these are your formal notes for today. Very uh, straightforward. Three important ideas behind rotating a segment. Uh, 180 degrees around a point that is not on the original line, it produces a parallel segment the same length as the original. Again, it preserves the same size. Number two, when the center of rotation is the midpoint, the rotated segment is the same segment as the original, except the vertices are switched. It lands on itself, assuming that we rotate it at 180 degrees. And then number three, which we didn't do together, but you can experiment with the applet on your own time, when the center of the rotation is at the end point, that segment together with its image forms a segment twice as long. Brain break. All right, digging deeper, a pattern of four triangles. Here's a diagram built with three different rigid transformations of triangle ABC. Using this applet to answer the questions, it may be helpful to reset the image each time but we're going to uh, see what transformations uh, map the pre-image, which is in blue, onto the other three images, which are in green. So try that on your own time, but we did this together in class. Finally, as a challenge, we're bringing back an old problem that we looked at in which we were trying to decide if two parallel lines have a point of rotation. And we discovered in that earlier activity that they do. In fact, the point of rotation is right there. And you can experiment by mapping this and using patty paper to rotate that line segment. In quadrant three of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. In part A, we were looking at this line of reflection and we were determining if this is a rotation, even though it has that line of reflection, kind of like that other cool down activity that we did uh, in an earlier lesson. But as we look closer at this, we notice that each of the vertices are equidistant from that line of reflection in the same spot on the other side. Therefore, this is not a rotation. Because remember, it would be on the opposite side if we were rotating 180 degrees. So therefore, this is, in fact, a reflection. Part B, we look at a trapezoid A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, which is the uh, green image in this case. They're going to ask you to label those vertices uh, to match where they're located in the pre-image. Based on this information, this rigid transformation is a rotation. 
and it's asking us to find all the known side lengths and angle measures. And this is what we came up with. Notice how CD is the same length for as C prime D prime. The corresponding angle A and A prime are both 130 degrees. In quadrant four of your math general, reflect on your progress in mastering today's learning standards. Rate your self-confidence and explain why you gave yourself that score. Just as a reminder that you have 10 activities in Khan Academy that you should be working on. Again, you can always see me during our office hours to go through specific problems that you would like to review. And then work on that scholastic math article called Drummer Patterns, uh, in which I've embedded the actual activity link to this presentation and the article itself to this presentation. But you know you're at the right activity when you see uh, a diagram that looks like that on the page. Finally, be here, be ready, be respectful, and you will be great at Griffin. And as always, be kind to one another. Have a great day.